Howdy, everybody, and welcome back into another episode of Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. Cole Thompson back in the driver's seat talking all things Texas A&M, and today, let's go ahead and preview the upcoming event. We have New Mexico coming into town. Can Texas A&M find a way to move to 3-0 with Zach Calzada as the starting quarterback? As always, make sure that you love this podcast. Make sure you listen to all of our great podcasts, including Locked on SEC with Sports Talk 790's Chris Gordy. Gordy breaks out all 14 teams, including baseball, basketball, recruiting, and nationally all SEC college football talk. Subscribe on the Odyssey app or wherever you get your podcast listening systems. As always, if you love this show and for all of you watching right here on Tegna, yeah, I got a haircut. It looks really good. I know. I look absolutely awesome. But if you love what you're hearing, make sure you're following me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson name right down there below. I am the host of the show and I love public feedback. Anything you can do to make this a more quality sounding podcast Monday through Friday, give me a follow, give me a shout out. I will add it into the mix. Secondly, Locked on Aggies. Logan Aggies is your number one source for all things 12 Man related content found here on LLP. You can subscribe on iTunes, listen on Spotify, and if you can't do any of that, listen live every single day at LockedOnPodcast.com. So Texas A&M, big game this weekend. Actually a lot bigger than I think people are putting into perspective. Because remember, as much as we want to admit that Texas A&M going into SEC play is ready to go, they are all geared up. They are star-spangled, absolutely geared up. They're not. You got to play this game. And going up against a 2 0 New Mexico team may on paper seem like an easy breeze until we know what Zach Calzada officially is. And we really don't. We have no idea because he's never really worked with the starting offense as the starter. He worked last week with the starting offense as the backup coming in to replace the starter. So that's going to be a really interesting mantra. How does he work now knowing for sure he is QB1 for week three? probably week four, week five, and week six of the college football season. So all that in mind, what are the keys to victory for Texas A&M? Let's start off with the first one. Calzada has a hot start. Calzada has got to play better than he looked against Colorado. And I give him a pass. He was probably thinking he was coming in in the fourth quarter. He was probably thinking he was coming in at some point during the game, maybe later on, just to spread the ball around, keep the defense on its toes. That was probably the end of where he thought his day was. Instead, he has to start. He has to play with starters. He has to work his way. He has to maintain the offense. He has to find a way to build consistency. And it didn't work. It didn't. They had, they went one of ten on first down for third down conversions until like the fourth quarter. Then they went five of five. So there's a way this can work, but he has to start fast. Now he's had a full week working with the first team offense, and only him. It's not him and Haynes working back and forth. It's not him and Haynes kind of building up. It's 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 just him. It's just Calzada. When that's the case, he's got to be able to pick up the ball. He's got to be able to move it fast. He's got to be able to attack this secondary. He has to be able to find a rhythm, a rapport, a nice consistency passing. He has to be able to use his legs. He's got to be able to keep the time of possession. He's got to pick up first downs. All of that has to happen early because the reality is, even in a game like this, the last thing you want to do is get behind. The last thing you want to do is get behind due to poor play. That's the last thing you want to do. And again, AM's defense, they're not going to let up a point. They really shouldn't. They should have a lot of three and outs. But at the same time, if you are a top 10 team going against a group of five school, you should be scoring. Maybe not every drive, but every other drive. You should be putting up the consistency of points. You should be moving the ball. You should be winning the trenches. You should be winning the time of possession. AM may be able to go, I don't know, hold them to a field goal, but it ends up being a five yard, I mean, a five minute drive. AM, you also want to be able to have that same five-minute drive, that same five-minute mantra, that same balance, that same consistency. You have to have that. And it all starts at the quarterback position. That's the very first place it begins. And after that, the rest of the team can step up. Step number two, offensive line protection. Listen, Haynes King, Zach Calzada, it does not matter. This is against a group of five school. It's not even a power five school. This is like Kent State level. You cannot allow pressure. If you're the offensive line and you're trying to prove that you are willing to play and ready to play in the SEC and you're ready to gear it up and good enough to be that team, you have to play better. It's just that simple. You have to play better. Offensive line, you cannot have a bad showing in this game and then go up against Arkansas. Did you watch what Arkansas did against Texas? Did you see what they were able to do? How they were able to move the ball? How they were able to consistently bulldoze B. John Robinson, Casey Thompson, Hudson Card all back? Yeah, you can't have that. You can't even have something remotely close to that. 
because if Arkansas is ready to play, they're geared up, they feel confident, and they're really, really tight. They are really looking forward to this game now because there's a very good shot they're ranked going into this game. So the offensive line has got to play better. The offensive line has got to play smoother. They can't allow they can't allow immediate pressure. They also can't have stupid penalties. You can't have five, you know, uh, false start penalties. You can't have a hold, you can't have six holding calls. You have to play more clean. I know it's a new offensive line. I get it. It's five new players. And I include Kenyon Green as a new player because if recently, think about it. He played right guard, left guard, right tackle. He's a new player. He is moving positions. It is a different spot of what you're practicing at left guard than it is a right tackle. So he's new. You have three freshmen starting right now with Aki, with Layden Robinson, with Bryce Foster playing center. You almost have four with Ruben Fathery, but you have Jameer Johnson right now starting at left tackle. You cannot have a bad game. The final thing that I think AM really has to do to be able to set themselves apart and make sure that they are contending along with the likes and controlling the game and all that. Go deep. You got to go deep. When you look at New Mexico's secondary, the tallest player on their team is six foot. The tallest player in their secondary is six foot. Your shortest wide receiver is 5'11", I think. 5'10", 5'11". Their biggest corner is six foot. That is a match-up, mismatch nightmare for guys like Chase Lane, guys like Caleb Chapman, guys like Demond Demas, guys like maybe even Hez Jones if he plays. Those are nightmare situations. You have to be able to allow your receiver to work up the field. So say he's running a seam route. You have to allow him to take a quick two-step, cut to the outside, vertical threat. Zach Calzada, over the top, boop, bread basket, go for 60 yards, 70 yards, 90 yards, 22 yards. Doesn't really matter. You just have to be able to move the ball. You have to be able to go vertical because this secondary is not going to play up to that same speed. So when it doesn't play up to that speed, when it doesn't play up to that level, what that means is you have the advantage. Your size alone has the advantage at Texas A&M. You have to be able to go over the top. I get the short passes. I get the dump routes. I get trusting Devon Chan. I get trusting Isaiah Spiller. I get all that. You have got to trust your vertical thread. This is the one game before SEC play with smaller corners, with smaller defensive backs, Go ahead and take a risk. Go right over the top. Get it in, bread basket, call it a day, make it yours. You have the best opportunity I have seen in a minute to really take advantage of the small secondary. You got to go ahead and go over the top with it. Before I go any further, this episode of Lock on Aggies is brought to you by Built Bar, where a candy bar meets a protein bar. Because you know that Built Bar has nine unique flavors. So whether you're into salted caramel, you know peanut butter, uh, I, you know mint chocolate chip, raspberry cookie, uh, cookie dough, uh, uh, what, what else is there? There's a ton, there's a ton. See, there's that many. You can't even name them off the top of your head. That's how many flavors there are. And guess what? Every flavor is covered in 100% real chocolate, and they're soft and easy to chew. Plus, if you don't know what flavor you like, that's okay. You can always get the variety pack. It's all nine unique flavors, two bars. That way you know what to purchase in the long term. The bars are covered in 100% real chocolate, soft and easy to chew. They're great for anybody on the keto diet because they're high in protein, high in fiber, low in calorie, low in sugar. Most bars only have about 130 calories, five grams of protein, five grams of sugar, five grams of net carbs. There's not a product like this out on the shelves right now. Go visit BillBar.com use the promo code LOCK15 to receive a 15% welcome bonus with your very first purchase. That's LOCK15 for 15% off your first purchase at BillBar.com. Stop eating the salty sweets and enjoy a treat that will meet your needs. Built Bar from BillBar.com. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked on Podcast Network. All right, let's continue this conversation. My three players that you have to watch for, for Texas a and These are the three names. They have a good day. We are in good pain. Number one, Richardson, because Richardson is actually more of like a strong safety. I know that he's been playing a little bit more in that cover two system, so they're playing both safeties back, Leon on one side, uh, Damani on the other. But I feel like this game, they're going to play him a little bit more in like that rover type role, probably closer to the line of scrimmage, because Terry Wilson can move. Terry Wilson is a very mobile quarterback. Terry Wilson can make a lot of plays with his legs, and he's not afraid to extend plays outside the pocket. So even when he moves and he's not running the ball, the pocket can collapse very quickly, and he can go ahead, zip out, start running, start running, find his target. Nope, not first read. Nope, not second read. Back to first read. Got him. Boom, 20-yard gain. It can happen at any single moment. And what he's good at 
is using his legs to keep drives alive. He doesn't have to always use them to actually move the ball 10, 15 yards down the field running it. He has to use them just behind the line of scrimmage so he is able to keep drives alive, allowing his receivers to get downfield. Damani, who is very good in zone and also can blitz a little bit, would be very interesting to see. Because having him play that rover role, basically what you're doing is you're telling him your job is to cover basically any running back coming out of the system, any tight end going in the flats area, that's your guy. But if there's nobody there, you have full missile, let it fly. Go ahead and knock that SOB out, get him out of the game, get him away. We don't want him here. We need him to be limited. I think that Damani Richardson is in for a very big game, both in coverage and against the run. So I would say he's probably my number three. Number two, uh, I got to go Anaya Smith. Here's why. Anaya Smith feels like the safe receiver. He feels like the very safe, the guy who's going to get 9, 10, 11. You know, Terry McLaurin, uh, have you watched what Taylor Heineke did on Thursday Night Football? He had like 12 catches, like 14 targets, 15 targets, something like that. Having that number one receiver, having that consistency, having that guy that you just trust, Maybe it's Jalen Weidemeyer. I don't know. But one of these guys, you have to be able to trust just every single play. Caught, 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 caught. First down, first down, first down, touchdown, touchdown. You got to be able to have that. You got to be able to have that guy that you can rely on, especially for a young quarterback. And you saw against Kent State, really, Haynes King was relying a lot on Agent Zero. Agent Zero, he was doing a lot of damage with. A lot of quick plays, a lot of quick slants. Got two touchdowns to start the year off. That is what you want to see from Calzada. I believe that once again, the number one name that you got to watch for is Anaya Smith. He's quick. He moves well. He's a, he has lateral coverage. More importantly, he can move in space. You can use him as a runner. He can do a lot of jet sweeps. He can do a lot of quick hits. You can run up uh, if you really want to. I honestly feel like you could run probably a flea flicker with him. Then use him actually just to get open because if he would be able to get downfield that fast, that's your guy. That's your guy you got to be able to cover. You got to be able to use him in a unique amount of ways and find any path or avenue to go out there and get him the ball. But number one has got to be Zach Calzada. I'm sorry. SEC play is right around the corner. SEC play is less than eight days away, nine days away. Wow, I am tired. It's been a long, it's been a long week, guys. It's less than nine days away. You have got to be able to be stable at the quarterback position. You will not last against teams like Arkansas, which means you certainly will not last against teams like Alabama, like Auburn. I would even say Ole Miss right now. The way the Ole Miss offense is playing, the way the Ole Miss team has looked, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that much either. So when I look at all that, that becomes a big question for me. Can you, as somebody, be the guy? As somebody who has played in the SEC now for three years, can you be the guy? Because again, now more than ever, for years, it was defensive play. Really good defensive play. Alabama used their great linebackers, their great cornerbacks, their great defensive linemen. Quarterback play was iffy. Yeah, don't worry about it. We got A.J. McCarron. We got Blake Sims, Jay Coker. We got an elite defense. We're good. Same thing with Georgia. Georgia right now, great defense. Still question marks at JT Daniels. Still question marks at the quarterback position as a whole. But overall, look pretty good. They look like a solid, a solid team. They look like a salvageable team, to say the least. You need to have an offense. AM's defense is elite. They are so good on every single level. But if you don't have that offensive approach, that offensive style, you don't have that quarterback who can move, who can be, keep plays alive, who, by the way, this is probably the biggest one that has teams buying into the culture, that has fans believing that he can be the guy. All of that and more. You got to be able to understand that if they don't buy into that, you're screwed. That is the biggest thing for a quarterback. So yeah, Haynes King is under the most pressure this week. My bad. Zach Calzada is under the most pressure this week. Because Zach Calzada, been here for three years, had a neck-and-neck -neck battle with Haynes King through the, through the entire training camp. Jimbo Fisher came out and said, this was down to the wire. All right, down to the wire. Time for that wire to be completely stretched out and show what you were made of. This is about to be SEC play. There's no time for excuses. College football season is back, and with it, that means that we have all-time bets at an all-time high. So make sure you go to the one place we love and the one place we trust. That's betonline.ag. 
BetOnline.ag gives you the best buyouts, the best bets, the best wagers every single day. And you can get up to a 100% welcome bonus. That's right. You can get double your actual deposit when you go visit BetOnline.ag and use the promo code NFL100. From football to basketball to boxing, the UFC to college sports, and much, much more, stop sitting on the sidelines, get into the action. BetOnline is the easiest way to do so. Do so at BetOnline.ag. You're online sportsbooks experts. Locked on Aggies, presented by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's never too early to start betting on SEC sports when you go ahead and listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast with your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. Get daily picks, wagers, Lee's locks of the day, and much, much more when you listen to the new Locked On Bets podcast presented by betonline.ag, wherever you get your podcast listening systems. All right, so prediction time. Let's go over under spread. So right now it's at 28 and a half points. I I understand people want it. I've been right now back-to-back weeks saying take the under. I say do it again. 28's a lot. I have no idea where where Calzada's going to be. And with that in mind, I'm willing to lose more money. I wouldn't touch the game just in general, unless I have to. I would not touch this game. But if I could, I would take the under. Until I know for sure what Zach Calzada is, until I know for sure what this offense is, I feel safer taking the under on points. And I also feel safer taking the under on total f- on the final. The spread is at over under 51 points. A&M offense, I think that maybe they'll get 35. I don't know what you'll see defensively. I have no idea what you'll see from you know the Lobos. If Terry Wilson gets on a roll and he starts building that nice consistency with the receivers, maybe he finds the end zone two or three times. So maybe 20 points at that point. Yeah, maybe it would reach 51. But I see this more so being a A&M game where they kind of cruise. They get like 28 points. They kind of just sit there. They go, okay, we got four touchdowns. Let's play strong defense. And maybe they give up a touchdown. Maybe they give up a field goal, 28-3, something like that. That feels more like the final score than something over 51 points. I don't see A&M's offense taking that 50 nug and then dropping it on them. And then again, of course, you know, if it goes 50, they drop a 50 egg. All you need is one point or two points. You need a safety from the Lobos. And then there you go. That's your two points. I would say bet the under on that too. So bet the under on the line, bet the under on the total points. And then my big prediction, I don't think there's a turnover this game. I think that's the biggest key to AM winning. I do not think there's a turnover. I think Calzada plays it smart, but he also plays it slow. He doesn't force throws. He keeps throws alive, but he goes ahead and he goes for the short pass. I don't know if he'll go deep. If he does go deep, I hope he connects immediately because that's going to be a big difference maker. But I don't think there's a turnover this game by AM's offense. I think that AM gets three takeaways in some capacity. Special teams, intercepting Terry Wilson, for example. I think they get three takeaways on this game. So no turnovers, three takeaways. What is my final score prediction? AM gets the win. I do think Calzada does look better than he did against Colorado. I think what you saw in those last two drives is more so the start of what we're going to see from him moving forward. I will go 31-10 as my final. I think that 41 points total, maybe giving up a touchdown in the fourth quarter, that's what happens. Maybe you give up a field goal like in the, on the first or second drive, you hold him to something. I think it's more so a really smooth progressional game for Calzada. They get about 28 points. I think he plays the whole game too, by the way. I think that 100% he plays the whole game. Maybe Bose gets in at the very end and they settle for a field goal or something. But 31-10 is my final prediction. That's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Aggies. Make sure you're following us on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson at Locked on Aggies. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify. Go follow us now on YouTube. Yep, we're on YouTube as well. So you can always do that and much, much more. I'll be back on Monday to recap what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully talk about a 3-0 Texas A&M team going in to Arlington and SEC play still undefeated. See you soon. And remember, give me all.